I think if you're G2, even on red side, you could actually aim to target ban uh, Parang again, because he's just been struggling. Malzar could even be a, a ban Parang toward champion. Parang, uh, potentially, because he's being used top lane uh, quite a bit. Obviously, red side, sometimes you gotta consider banning uh, certain other things like uh, Nidalee. In this case, no, because uh, Rocket actually did the favor. So, and then Karma was one of the other ones about to mention with the first big option. Small change here for G2. They banned Trundle and Gnar uh, in game one. With Karma being banned out, it means one of those will go through. Uh, for Rocket, they have allowed Siva to be open. Siva, first pick. It's happened before, it's happened in many regions. <laughs> it could happen again. Yeah, I mean, first picking right now is kind of funny because Karma tends to be their most obvious choice. And then, like, Vladimir was the other obvious choice. But after the nerfs, not every team wants to first pick him anymore. Yeah. Uh, he is open here. I really like this Gnar ban. Again, I stand by my statement. It was by far the best champion for Parang. Uh, Trundle is another good one for him. But this does mean G2 throughout the entire composition can actually build against Trundle. And Trundle does struggle against some of these very long-range control mages, like Azir, even like Victor, because it's very hard for Trundle when he engages into the fight to get onto these control mages. And he very often finds himself in a position where he kind of just runs around and tries to buy time, and that's it. <laughs> well, if Rocket <laughs> can buy enough time, they can make him relevant. Um, for perks, though, uh, the world is his oyster. Got a lot of champions to fall back to. Definitely like uh, Sivir. Uh, I think that's a good choice. Oh, Bard is open. Always got to consider that when you have a uh, support like Mithy. Uh, the good old Bard. And because Karma's banned away. Because ba Karma obviously is banned away here, so suddenly some of these other support picks that are still valued very highly, just not as high as Karma, are there. And ooh, this is interesting. I love watching Mithy play Bard. Like Mithy and Mickey, when they pick the Bard, you know stuff will happen. That was a play-by-play -play statement. That was a play-by-play -play line if ever um, I've heard one. Everyone who wants to be color casters, write that statement down and, and deliver don't it. Don't say it. Every cast. Yeah, don't say it. Every cast, I want to hear that statement. <laughs> you know stuff will happen, ladies and gentlemen, as we load up for the third game of the day. Did you realize isolate, isolated deaths are dying alone? Yeah. I mean, the word isolated means being alone. I know you're, you're, like English is not your native language, but... I'm here to teach you. I, I can help. You are the worst teacher ever. I actually... Uh, also with your own South African accent. I actually opened synonyms for expect. Because I get frustrated yeah. using the we word. Expect, expect. Yes. Do well, yeah. Anticipate, uh, contemplate. See coming. Assume, predict. All of these other alternative words. That means I don't have to say I expect, expect. Yeah. I predict, expect will get uh, a counter pick in this uh, game here. Sadly for him, obviously, he can't really take the NAR. You can still pick Shen while he can struggle against Trundle. You can make a lot of plays in the mid game still. Not the greatest matchup, but actually another matchup I've seen quite a bit into Trundle is like Lissandra top. Uh, funny enough, <laughs> because you can actually, you can push him down and then you use it to force fights in the mid game again. But it's the same risk uh, you play around. We're still getting used to Sven's new hairstyle. No, you are. I am. I've got no problem to it. it. I'm not saying there's a problem. Um, so I'm getting used to it. What's your take on this Kindred? Um, Took another round of nerfs, uh, this patch, and I, I think it's fallen off in priority oh, from what I've seen of 613. Definitely fallen off. I, I, I see very few junglers who still want to play Kindred. Yeah. Over Elise, Gragas, Olaf. You know, Olaf is banned in this and Rex has picked away, but Elise and Gragas were still available. Trick had a great Gragas game before. We had two games earlier today on Gragas as well that looked fantastic. Kindred is the Airwax special. Yeah. He can play his solo game, but that solo game wins him maybe one game out of 10. And he's, it's really risky against G2, especially. He's played seven games leading into this. 27 kills, 33 deaths Ooh. on Airwax's Azir, uh, Kindred. So, uh, the Azir, there you go, there's that Azir into Trundle that you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, the control mage, long range into Trundle. And Talia has been locked in. Yay. Uh, not as exciting as yesterday when it was locked in for the first time. We were all going crazy here in Europe, but it also got moved to top. This will be the first mid lane Talia in, in Europe. And it's funny because this is actually a matchup I watched in LCK. Uh, Rux Tigers versus SKT. And Koro played it really well and actually had a great game on Talia. But uh, it's a matchup that, according to Faker, it's actually in favor of Azir. He said that it was really good uh, for them to have the Azir prepared because he had played against Italia in, in, in scrims and, and, and such. 
and he knew that Azir would be a fine matchup into it, so he picked it without any problems. So that is uh, interesting. Obviously, their SKT team did also manage to win that game. They did. We'll find out if Rocket can do the opposite. Uh, no. Yes, yeah, it would. We it will would. if they can do the opposite. Yeah, it was it was like a double negative. Here. Oh, so that leads Gangplank to win that one. Well. And Gangplank into Trundle. Okay, so tell me about Gangplank into Trundle. Well, uh, this is again another one, uh, another of these picks where we've seen it a bit more in in Korea. Actually, the Gangplank top, not quite the same as it used to be. Where you used to like stack tons of crits and just like try and one shot people. After Trinity Force lost his crit, uh, it's obviously uh, changed the build path a little bit. You see like Trinity Force Ghost Blade very often instead. But into Trundle, interesting pick here. Obviously, Gang playing into melee matchups can, can always farm. But Trundle is still quite a beast if you get a proper 1v1. So I, I feel like this is much more for actual team fighting where a massive zoning ulti from a Gangplank that slows down everyone against a Kindred, against a Talia who wants to kite yeah. back, and against a Trundle who wants to run at you. Like, there's a lot of members here who relies a lot on being able to constantly move around on the side of Rocket. Gangplank ulti... Plus Azir. Plus Azir can really counter that quite effective. Plus Bard. There's a ton of, like, AoE zoning CC. But you have to move around all the time. Constantly dancing, constantly darting. Rocket, they've got a, a difficult composition to pull off. And I think they're going to be very reliant on, on getting ahead in this early game. Because I think the longer that Gangplank and Azir are given to scale up, the scarier and scarier that team composition and those team fights become. Yeah, and I, I'm really looking forward to see Betsy on this Talia here. See if, she, if, uh, she, if he can actually kite back in these fights properly and use her to her full potential. Because her all-in damage is great, but then the follow-up damage Unless you can land every single Q, is not the greatest compared to an Azir, who's just like standing there hitting, hitting, hitting. So it's a lot about kiting around with Rylai's over and over. Yeah, kiting around and seeing whether or not Betsy can find those kills. Yesterday, Raze, his teammate, donated a few to Wanda. Um, said, here you go. Have some <laughs> gold, my friend. Uh, Maybe he thought like Wanda was a god or something. He had to sacrifice. Yeah. Like as a, as a, a good sign. Trick. Could get collapsed on. You gotta uh, worry, okay. Keep in mind, Talia, when it comes to landing multiple Q shots, does actually a lot of damage, even in the early game. You mean like that? Yeah. Flash away from the death sentence. Um, I like the fact that Trick respected the potential. But if G2 get caught in a lane swap, that's not gonna be massively impactful. It was window shopping, but remember the patch changes. <laughs> Biggest impact <laughs> ever. Just according to the show. Why would he be shopping? He has no money. Well, maybe he's, I don't know. Well, he's Actually, good. I think that's the definition of window shopping, isn't it? Minions. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, he's look standing it. outside. Yeah. So Thunderlords for Talia. Uh, obviously, Threaded Volley, first level. Going to start trying to push in perks and keep him on the back foot. Yeah, so Talia, when it comes to very early laning phase, is able to push in a lot of these control mages because of a Q spam. Again, as long as you don't stand on this work ground underneath you, you get these multiple hits. It's actually very easy to get early push going and just like kind of force them on the top. But the problem is Azir can kind of do the same. Uh, it's more of it against champions like Victor. You can push him in. Azir is like, all right, you can shoot multiple times with Q. I can just put a soldier and start hitting multiple times. And we kind of even up, but it is slight advantage still for Betsy. And he can look to get pressure early on. And it's so much about constant moving. If you stand on work ground, your Q does so little. When you keep moving around it, though, you can do so much damage. This whole game could be defined by zoning and, and, and <laughs> circles, because you're going to have the workaround, you're going to have powder kegs, you're going to have bard ultimates, cannon barrages. And it, it's, it's always interesting to see how players start to prioritize how they move around the lane. Betsy actually dancing in between Ooh, that Sand Soldiers, didn't connect to the Seismic Shove. I wanted to knock Perk straight into two or three extra shots. Didn't manage to hit it though. But again, with Talia, another thing to look for is that ulti that is so unique. You can literally block off almost an entire lane. You can actually block off an entire lane. And it's very good at ganking side lanes. She's a fantastic roamer. Also because when she's running near walls, she gets the extra movement speed, starts surfing away. And it's, she's so good at impacting side lanes without having an actual teleport. And that's something we gotta look for. But Sven got a very mobile AD carry to escape. Expect will not be able to run away. If they go for the top lane, that's actually what I wanna see from Rocket later on in the game. I wanna see them once they get standard lanes, shut down this gangplank, because Trundle, Pillar, Talia, Ulti. There's a lot of walls being put up here. Yes. 
and there's very little game plan can do to get out of them. Yeah, as well as even on G2's own team, uh, as Yogi is throwing out those. So the tower, the tower's going down in the lane swap. Uh, pretty much bang on even here. There we go. Rocket get theirs. G2 trade, but uh, Sven had already recalled. So four, five, six seconds sooner. Yeah. Going to be in lane. Oh, and going to take a magical journey to speed that process up even more. So uh, much like last game, uh, again, Rocket with the Jin and also auto attacking these minions quite a lot, slows them down in the swap. Not the most interesting thing, but it does matter. Sadly, again, we have the Cloud Drake, so actually teams don't put that much value on, on the early objective. It's about denying uh, CS. So we just talk more about uh, Talia. Like, Rylai's fantastic item on her. Because, first? Um, not necessarily first item. No. Okay. Um, second item, I like it a lot. It is fantastic for the way you like to play with her. But it's so much about constant moving and kiting. Uh, if you can keep using this extra movement speed you gain from rock, walking around and work around, and then always get out of it, find another Q to keep slowing down people, like, you can be really hard to catch. And then also it's about, honestly, understanding when to be very aggressive. Because you have the ability to reposition in these fights with your ulti and like block people off. But you often have to put yourself in danger while doing it. Because remember when you're flying on a wall, when you actually reactivate it, if you take damage, you get knocked off the yeah. wall. So like an Azir putting up a soldier, that'll take damage. Not the perfect combo, but uh, we get to see what you can do. Put out a little seismic shot behind and knocks him back, or is it toss it's called? Yeah, seismic shove. Yeah, that's seismic the W. Shove. That's the W. Knock them back into your E here for extra damage. And then when you get people on the tower, because you can fire these shots here over actually like a few seconds, you can use it also to deny quite a lot of CS because they got to pick between last hitting or taking the damage. Yeah, losing out some HP on that trade. Uh, Benz is actually spamming this ability quite a lot. Burn through half his mana pool. In contrast to like Wonder yesterday, it felt Wonder hit a lot of those Ws, was shoving. Um, Everybody around, uh, Rocket in fact, throughout most of the mid to late game team fights. And Etsy fires out the threaded volley, continues to side forward. Now he's standing on worked ground. Very good little combo, but not, not the most him. amount of damage. Oh, because he's on the work ground, he's actually not able yeah. to force anything. Uh, from perks, they only get the one shot right after. But laning phase, we know Talia will do well. Outside of laning phase, once you get into team fights, that's where it can be harder to execute her. Because again, her combo, as you can see right here, it doesn't cover a lot of ground. So like, you put that down, you knock people back into it, and then you kind of run around landing these cues over and over. But against Azir, who does so much consistent DPS, it's really hard because you are very squishy. You're not tanky, like on a Talia by any means. So you gotta be so careful when you're moving around in these fights here. We'll be exciting to see what Betsy can do. We get our standard lanes, and this is where I want to see Rocket put focus on shutting down Expect. Gangplank is still not a great champion before he gets two or three completed items. Yeah. It is a little bit better now with Ghostblade as a second item, but when you have Talia ulti, when you have Trundle Pillar against a champion who only has a flash, I think that's where you put your focus. Yeah, get yourselves ahead by punishing that lane. Um, but it also means Betsy and Parang need to be on the same page, and Parang needs to step up from his previous performance. It's actually just stepped on that workaround, so let me find out the single shot before backing away. And with standard lanes, Sven and Mithy, Lucian Bard, 61 CS to 41. That lane swap, those few seconds... It matters. ...become bigger and bigger and bigger. It means plus 20 there, plus 10 in the top lane as well. And also, because now Rocket with a team swapping back into standard lanes, they obviously had to wait for the wave, so they will catch some of it about probably 10 down the bottom lane now and then push it back out. But does mean again G2 can make another early recall and then decide, do we want to go top lane now? Do we want to push in top with four members and just like take a Rift Hell after? That's what they're going for now. Expect is getting ganked, but more people are coming from G2. There's a flash available. Trick flashes forward. Expect flashes up. Parang follows and jumps for first blood. Trick's now in trouble. Sven and Mithy want to join the fight. Exhaust on Parang. Trick should be able to heal up if he can burrow. Manages to use the passive. Airwax will buy some time with Lamb's respite. Sven does a little dance. Moves around in the pale moonlight and Sven picks up the kill. Yeah, it's hard to be angry at Rocket because we talked about camping that top lane. That's what they did. The problem is when G2 recalled from the bottom lane, you don't actually know where they're going. You have to respect that they can run to the top lane. So once they go for the gank, unless they could like almost one shot expect and then get out of there, it would be too risky and they get punished for two kills for G2 as a return. And this wave is still pushed towards Expect, meaning Parang will get no farm. So this is the gang on top. 
Again, had it been a 2v2, great. Problem is, the bot lane had already recalled. They had that information. They get jumped, they end up dying. That's two kills now over. Alex trying to flash him, see if he can get a last hit onto Trick. Very ambitious from him. And now this wave coming. On your minimap, you see a massive blue wave. Well, that's just gonna keep pushing down towards Expect. He's still standing with that wave. And where's Parang going now? He's just running around the river because this wave is frozen. Yeah. So not only did you lose two kills, you also mean you also put your top lane in a situation where he can't get any farm. Where's the gangplank who's just gonna sit there and last hit the Q and stack up? So Rocket though, they're gonna play a little bit on their strong side. Um, Jin's down bottom, blue buff secured here with Airwax. He smited that one down. And the rest of Rocket starting to shove in this inner tower bottom. Sven doesn't have the culling yet. Uh, but he will fairly soon, yeah, if they need to wave clear. And now normally the reaction when someone is freezing is you make a play on them on the opposite side with a big wave. But Gangplank has ulti now because he's getting so much farm. He can use that to clear this wave, like we see here. Meaning that this siege from Rocket that would normally always give a tower suddenly gets interrupted. Perfect use of Gangplank and makes the situation even worse for Rocket. But yeah. Gangplank used to be this guy who would always ruin the lane for plants because of his <laughs> ulti. Still is that guy. Still is that guy right yeah. now. <laughs> and Parang has not been farming anything for at least two minutes. Yeah. He's now trying to get a Cloud Dragon. Nope, he's actually not even getting a Cloud Dragon. Parang's got one CS in the last two minutes. Expect uh, has managed to pull up plus 35. And this is where you either send Parang and your jungler to go hard push out the top lane. Or Death push. you wait for this wave on Death bottom push. side. They're trying to get a pick here. Uh, ward came down. Practice. But then you send your AD carry and support to the top lane. It sucks for everyone, but you might have to do it just to push it out. Expect it's still sitting there. They don't care about losing Cloud Drake. It literally doesn't matter at all for G2. 61 CS. No one is stopping Expect, and now it's almost too late. Either you do it instantly when you're level 5 to level 5 and your jungle joins and you push it out. Because you had Talia ulti as well to back up in case you need it. Or full back up in case you need it, but now... They've just kind of done nothing with it. Not swap the AD carry up there. Not put the top lane with jungle and Talia potentially. This must be one of the biggest CS leads we're gonna see in 10 minutes. Yeah, it really feels that way. Perk's going quite aggressive on Betsy. Slides and glides forward. Wait, now they're doing it? So you, what, you decided to wait until you're two levels down? Now let's see, expect uh, Cannon Barrage will be available fairly soon. Uh, sitting at about 13 or 1400 gold, getting closer and closer to Trinity Force. By the way, the next dragon being Cloud. We've had no real luck with the fun oh, dragons today. Oh, seen one Infernal, I think. And now we should need to see Trick on top side. Because the only play for Rocket is pushing out this way. And if Trick was here instead of actually going to the bottom side, they could have just taken the 2v2 against the level 5 Trundle and made it even worse. If Expect can still keep the wave outside of tower, now Trick is here. It's oh, a little bit too late. Ah, I want to see him a little bit before, but they're still going to get it. They're still going to indeed. EOX doesn't even have Flash available. Landra Spy will buy some time. Expect decides to come back in, looking for the heal and the last hit. Trick flashes forward. A full channel culling. Spins on a killing spree. All right, did you get what they want? Could have been done a little bit quicker, but honestly, you get two more kills. The Gangplank got one of them. Uh, he's 84 CS to 24. I wonder what the earliest Flame Horizon is. I mean, we might be looking at it in this game. He's about 40 CS. And we're there. At this rate, uh, that's not unfeasible. Ah, problem is now they, this lane is now pushing because Parang actually got to kill enough minions. And there was a cannon as well coming from T2. So sadly, he got to push out. Sven is going to follow it all the way into tower. And now all G2 has to do is make sure Parang can't freeze it. Honestly, even if Parang freezes now, you just fourth place on the map. You got a level eight gangplank with ulti. Parang is out of this game. This is the play from top. We, uh, we talk about, again, Trick going to bottom side first. Meant that it was delayed a little bit, but they still get everything they want. Uh, Swim picked up another kill. Nothing Rocket is doing on the map. This is uh, another clear, clear advantage for G2 and yeah. Just a much, much better early game. It's, it's a uh, few minutes late, but uh, the CSD for Expect over Parang was 36 CS at 10 minutes. That actually ties the highest CSD we've had in summer, where Knight actually was plus 36 over Senkais. So it is more CS records.
Yes. The summer split to fish you That's all we got here in Europe is CS Records. <laughs> and now we're gonna get a fight, Trevor, because Airwax is invading on his own. Airwax has actually flashed. Wow, gets caught by the Tempered Fate. Cannon Barrage, as well as Mippy's Cosmic Bindings, will allow G2 to get another kill. That was just so well timed. Yeah, Mithy is fantastic on board, but such a risky and greedy invade from Airwax stepping in to steal away a wolf camp. Small advantage he could actually get from it. Ends up getting punished. Great trade again from Betsy. This time around he got more shots down onto Perks. But Perks' job in this game is do not intentional feed. Yeah. Farm the mid lane and just let your side lanes win. Deficio, side lane, this is a big deal. The CSD record at 15 minutes is plus 51. Look at this wave that Expect is about to catch. We might be able to break it. I'm so happy you're <laughs> so excited about this. Mithy predicting the lantern. Beautiful play from him. And then Raze also gets to flash out. I'm tracking over on the right side. How much was the CS advantage? Plus 51. 51. It's 106. He's breaking it. He's breaking it. It's plus 53 now. Yeah, but it's not a 50 minutes yet. Does it count? It's 30 seconds. If he can hold that advantage. For another 30 seconds. Why? Well, I'm getting told we need 15 minutes. The least exciting CSD record. Oh. Woo, there's one guy. one guy. One guy. I love you, dude. Actually, it might be our cameraman. Sorry. I take it back. <laughs> well, we do like our cameraman, too. We do, but when they're cheering, you know, when for the boring statement. It's happening, Trevor. It Ten is seconds. happening. 10 seconds. This is, this is going to be close. And Parang just recalled. <laughs> he wants it to happen. It's like, just do it, man. Just finish me. The problem is now I have to do arithmetic. What is what is this? Is that 64 CS? Yay! Oh, I love you guys. Thank you, Berlin, for helping. <laughs> hey, Danish flag. Danish flag. So plus 64, if my math is correct, is our new CSD at 10. Flame Horizon is plus 100. Let's see gets locked down with Tempered Fate. Cosmic Binding against the wall and the culling. Lambs Respite will buy some time. A lot of life-saving techniques. But Betsy's able to walk away with his life. I can't wait to read about how uh, Gangplank beats Trundle so easily in lane, and that's why there's such a big CS difference. And obviously, it's nothing to do with that freeze, and then Rocket deciding to walk around the map for what, three, four minutes? I mean, kind of like, how do we deal with the top lane? I don't know, run bot lane. All right, let's go top lane now when we have three levels down for no reason. Like, they managed to just give Expect everything. Good trick. Good trick. Oh, Perks has already killed. That was a very good seismic shove. Trick was waiting, but he waited so long. Perks got caught. Perks used his exhaust as well. Trick has used his flash already. Jumps under Betsy. Betsy goes down. Manages to put out the Unraveled Earth. That'll slow down any further oh. engages. Steelback gets one with a curtain call. Third shot goes wide and the fourth. Can't see if that one connects. I feel like it did. Expects jumped in the fight. It's a two for three. So Rocket gets a little bit, got some damage on mid tower, and then Betty with a good combo. Steelback is still full HP, not able to get Mithy. Sven wasn't even in the fight, he's actually sitting bot lane. So was that 5v4? Right now, it's a 5v4. And in the end, they end up trading quite a lot. Expect right now is sitting on 7,000 gold. <laughs> Parang is sitting on 5,000. That's 2,000 gold difference at 16 minutes between these two top laners. And now you're gonna get your ghost plate as well on, uh, on this gangplank, so that's gonna be even greater for him. I mean, the gold lead is 4,000 gold, so 2,000 of that difference is just All right. the top lane. Good little combo, hook into the damage from Betsy, but that's just a one-for-one -one trade off with the Gangplank ult being so impactful. And then they just end up getting another trade. Good engage by Trick, and then Steelback returns the favor. Have we even seen um, uh, an ultimate yet from Betsy? No, we have not. Okay. But, again, because Expect got to freeze the wave for, like, the opportunity Five, wasn't minutes. there. Yeah, this entire game just changes. Because it was supposed to be Expect pushing up, then Pillar into Talia wall, into killing Expect three or four times. Frank would be fed. You know what I haven't spoken about since last year? Barrel mechanics, Deficio. Oh. Do you remember that buzzword when Gangplank was all the rage? The barrel mechanics. The barrel mechanics. When Soaz was showing up Hooney back in the day. I remember that. I remember at MSI when we got to see it as well once yeah. from Flash Wolves. And we got the sick bell mechanics where he was curving it yeah. every single time. Well, Expect just showed us a little bit of mechanics there. Comboing a three barrel stack onto Parang. Uh, three level advantage in that matchup. Thank you, observers. As Expect's gonna shove a wave in, Parang will be happy to get his 
mitts and some juicy yeah, bomb. And now you just run mid as the gangplank. You have ulti. You can put gangplank ulti behind the tower. Do it, do it, do and it, and they tower. do. Rocket are in trouble. Raise and Earwax standing on top of land. Mechanics. Fight. There oh, it is. Mechanics gets one for Raze. Even try to flash away from that. Mithy takes a magical journey. And Expect is loving his life right now. He's playing for the best team in Europe, and he gets to get free farm on Gangplank the first 18 minutes, and then he just runs from lane to lane, killing people. What a great day for Expect. Yeah, he's my uh, lead candidate for player of the game, just letting you know. I feel getting, like you're spoiling it getting for everyone. Getting the inside. I'm just, you know, things can change. All right, Steelback's gonna stop firing out his curtain call. Good damage oh, on Expect. Betsy. And Expect goes down. I rescind my vote. Yep. After one mistake, yep, that's you it. are down. You just reset, basically. Uh -huh. You build up points whenever you do good Listen stuff. Listen to this. One mistake, down to zero. 50% of G2's deaths are because of expect. I mean, that's a lot. Half Big of them, dude. Statements. It is. And, that, and because of expect dying, Mid -tower Rocket take down. the tower. There's still 5,000 gold down. Uh, the rest of G2 actually not responding yet. Rocket looking to put some more damage down. Tempered Fate will slow any further pressure, but the tower still taking damage. Betsy's Airwax has gone tower. way too deep. It's not all the way forward. I don't know what you were doing. And the tower stands. Tower stands. I actually don't understand why Airwax went forward. I think he walked in to see if he can get a last hit on either Perks or Mithy, and then found himself on the wrong side of the tower and couldn't get out because Trick was also hovering to the side. This is the 5 over 4 Gangplank ulti behind tower always allows you to take the tower Gigi wants more though to actually go for the fight at the same time and then good little combo from Expect. Just missed Airwax though, so uh, doesn't get the 10 out of 10. <laughs> Gotta be critical here. Yeah. Airwax was chasing the kill on Mithy. Yep. Just did a quick uh, double check. It's it's often a safe guess with Airwax, but like he was probably chasing a kill. <laughs> and that's why he ended up being a bit out of position. 0-5-3. Much like Expect is responsible for half of G2's deaths, Airwax is responsible for half of Rocket's deaths, although 0-5-3 is significantly worse than 3-2-3. Cloud Drake picked up by G2. Uh, I take that back by Rocket. The most exciting of Drake's. And we get another game where G2 managed to win the early game without ever really being under pressure. Yeah. I, I feel like Betsy's been good on Talia though. Uh, he's actually been able to set up some good combos and secure a kill here and there. But it doesn't matter a whole lot when you watch, obviously, the top lane matchup right now. ADC has advantage still for Expect. And then suddenly Talia's ulti, when you can't go to that side lane, it's difficult race, might go down. Yeah, he might, but look at the damage under Perks. Betsy's doing what he can to carry. Emperor's Divide picks up a kill onto Raze, and Parang's left alone behind enemy lines. G2 lose nobody, despite Betsy's best efforts. Baron is alive, 21 minutes in, three guys are down. This could be the opportunity for Betsy to show off his mechanics. G2 are not starting it yet, because two members are returning to base. And Mithy dies. That's a quick way to get back to Buffet and buy. And buy. <laughs> uh, so a way to get out of the base again, but it's all about buying. It's all about buying. Um, he can't uh, He can't have his shopping experience interrupted now because he's dead. Exactly. So, yeah. you see, next next level of the analysis. Like the aggressive player from Mithy, Erex actually hops forward to get out of tempted face. Yeah, and Erex is very close to getting a kill here, but he ends up going in 1v2 and then exhaust and a good ulti from Perks secures the kill. And uh, just a little bit too early in the game, I feel, for G2 uh, to actually rush down that Baron. Also with Airwax, making sure Mythic could get the items he wanted. Not window shopping. He was actually moving. Yeah, it was moving. Just caught out. Couldn't window shop anymore. No, he could actually, because he was dead. Yeah. What is it called when you buy a window? I mean, I guess it's also window shopping. I'm just asking maybe you're, you're the English guy here. I don't know. I've never had to buy a window before. No, you never had to buy a window? No, because every building I've gone into has already had windows. Whoa. So Maybe when you buy a house, you know, build it up from the ground, got to buy windows. You do, yeah. Um, I wonder where Rocket are in their house building. Uh, Krepo had a fantastic analogy yesterday for, for teams building up their uh, 
synergy and building up. It's like building a house. Then you need to have solid foundations. Sure. Then you need to have good support from your walls. Then you want to put a roof on, start to like actually becoming a house. That means becoming a team. And then the really good teams are like painting it and putting up artwork of and course, like yeah, buying yeah. windows. I hope every team would buy windows. Yeah, me too. But that is a very yeah, very Microsoft good would prefer that as well. Definitely. They will just auto upgrade anyway. <laughs> they don't care. They don't care, man. You look away for one second and you got Windows 10. Hey, we've got a Weaver's Wall and Sven might be dead. Not just yet though, Tim, but Fate will buy some time. Bitsy and Parang got locked on the wrong side of the wall. I got very excited there, but Sven's able to flash away. Yeah, uh, everyone from Rocket on top side. Sadly, their Lucian pick does have the ability to dash. A lot I of damage from Betsy there. That's uh, Flame Horizon. One oh, CS. One CS. No, Parang got one. And there, there we, we go. go. Flame Horizon, 2402. Don't know if that's the earliest. Raze will out. potentially go down. Threaded Volley puts some damage on the trick, but he's already pretty beefy. Indian Zone and Omen plus Cinderhold. Airwax, where are you going? Well, he's got the kill. I will take that back. Airwax gets one before going down himself. Death Sentence connects onto Raze. The root holds trick in place. Again, yeah, Trevor, never ask where's Airwax going. Instead, ask who is he killing. Got it. This time around, it was Perks. Expect barrel mechanics. This time oh. around, finds nobody. But I think that's because Rocket dodged. They were able to get away from Expect. But Airwax, he gets at least a kill. Getting a little bit silly. You know, a lot of uh, they do forward when they're this and, far ahead. Yeah, and then suddenly you take some fights and randomly the jungler is in your face and he's actually 0 7 and he gets a kill onto you as well uh, because these fights have become extremely messy. Still back is the guy together with Betsy who are right now trying real hard to see if they can claw their way back into this game. But G2 are now healthy enough, high enough level to set up for that Baron. No teleports in this game just yet, but uh, once you start face checking here against multiple barrels, it becomes tricky. Yeah. Then also all these walls that Mithy can land stunts around. He's been having some great ulties so far. The Mithy. That'll also be interesting. Weaver's wall comes down mm -hmm. from Betsy, and Mithy goes, "Thank you. I'll stun you against it." Yeah, I'll so. use that. Yeah. We've seen one now from Betsy. I uh, was used to try and catch out Sven. Didn't get to do a whole lot. So this is uh, after. That little engage in the top lane where Rocket lost out because they lost the bot tower. So they dive in for race. And then they actually just end up walking past Airworks. And they didn't realize, oh wait, he's actually still over there. And it's a 1v1 <laughs> between him and Perks. And Airworks just won it. <laughs> the 0 6 at that time, <laughs> Kindred, just 1v1 the Azir. And when we come out of the replay, betsy has been caught by Tempered Fate, is in trouble, running away for his life. Raze is already dead. Sven took him down. Sand Soldier sent forward by Perks. Curtain call, tags, trick. One, two. Third shot goes wide, and the fourth oh. doesn't have the range. G2 for zero. Nice synergy, and behind everything, I uh, expect is running around killing people. G3, zero. Uh, does play the Oh, no, but Perks has it. The Sand Soldiers and Emperors divide. Parang bounces into away. It. <laughs> Perks is looking for more. Come on, conquering Sands forward. Four members of Rocket down. Baron will also drop. Follow Rocket down. Close it down into the underground, but I'll say something else to the afterlife. And G2 are still in full control. I've actually, no, I have seen Dustblade once in the US. It's actually killed someone. It was close. It happened, uh, it no, I think it happened last week or the week before. That's what I mean. I saw it the yeah. one time. I saw it the one time where he actually got the kill. So, good engage. Mithy again with the ulti. I mean, every single time a fight started, Mithy is there. Get a few kills. And then expect is just running behind the team now. There's, oh, here's Parang. He's in the game. Synergy. Yeah. <laughs> is that painting your house kind of stuff? Yeah. Oh, I wish he didn't parlay. Yeah, see, but that's it where he got the so reset. Good. And then he gets so close. Ah, Perks jumps in, has the same value as a dust blade, picks up the kill, and <laughs> also, again, story of the game the for Parang here. <laughs> Holy moly, man. It's it's not been a fun game for Parang, but he's also being sold by his own team. Yeah. So it, it, it's kind of on both. Well, we're in 27 minutes in, and there's been 25 kills. G2 have completely run away with this game. Um, just They started the, the snowball in the top lane, and it has crushed Rocket at every opportunity despite the Stoneweaver being on Rocket's team. 
Too much of a stretch? No, no, okay. I'll take it. We get some clouds as well. No mountains, because we have enough in this game with Talia obviously there. Three cloud drakes for the people. For the people. Um, this is where the people riot. This is... <laughs> <laughs> RNG. It's uh, sometimes your friend. Well, again, when you get more of them, it is fine. Perk's getting caught. He is caught. He is rooted. No hourglass either. Perks is going to be able to flash away to safety and raise. Is in fact the one that goes down. Spin though, it's caught out with a lot of damage. AOX is on the front line once again. Lambs Respite comes out and the Sun Disc looking to buy time. Looking to put damage down. Perks sends the soldiers out. Takes down Betty looking for more. Dust Blade will barely scratch Parang. Expect is not done. Walking all the way forward. Steps over the captive audience and the base is broken into G2. Will be able to use this Baron buff. Take down their first inhibitor. Potentially taking more, actually, because they can just peel around to middle where Perks is waiting. Well, right now, I'm just looking at Betsy in every fight. I want to see how he placed him. He got another kill before, together with their OX, and the rest of our G2 are pushing in. Rocket is coming, though. They have the trundle. There's no Never mind. They don't have the trundle. Uh, Parang. He's playing backline trundle. Uh, but look at that damage. One Q, an auto. Kills 50% of Razor's HP. Expect. Not going to be able to connect those barrels, despite activating the Ghost Blade. And it really is just a matter of time now before G2 can knock over those last few hurdles. Yeah, again, Tower's almost down. They got Cannon Minion pushing in. A few hits from Azir and it is dead. Obviously, again, you got to respect Rocket with the potential fight on the Tower. But so little they can do. Yeah. Tempered Fate will catch Betsy in the tower. It allows Rays to get caught up. Betsy actually jumps over to the side. Perks flies forward. He's able to pick up the double kill. The tower drops and spins chasing with Culling. Dashing forward, sidestepping. Gets caught up by the Root. And still back takes him down. Just a little love tap. Picks up the ninth kill of the game for Rock Cap, but G2 are up 14,000. We're going to go all the way oh, back yeah. with a crazy. We're going really far back. Perks got a card, but then it turned into a really good combo. Now, look at that from Betsy. I like that. He's been very good. When it comes to uh, knocking people back into his mind fields. Rock fields. Rock fields. I guess they do explode. That would make them mines. We need, like, a Lego skin for this one. And just, like, Lego. Lego's made in Denmark, front. isn't it? It is. Of course. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a oh, Danish thing. Danish I mean, thing. what do you mean, come on? But like, she puts out Lego in front of her and knocks you back into it. Like, that does a lot of damage. Little plastic bricks. You can't like, expect you to just know this is a Danish pride thing. I don't know, Trevor. Is I don't know. Is I feel Lego like that a Danish one, word? That one is... I mean, it's not really like a word specific. Okay. Just a name. It's just a name. Um, Deficio. Common knowledge, I'm just saying. We've hit uh, a bunch of like CS records this game. I'm going to change the tone just a little. There's a three-way tie for the most deaths this split in a single game. Okay. Do you want to know how many deaths that is? Well, who are the proud players sitting tied? Find that out for you in a second. My uh, stats knowledge doesn't go names. I didn't know there's a three-way tie. Oh, okay. I thought you had the name. That was part of the story, right? No, no. Oh, it's a story. It's just a record. Because yeah, now the, story is the record is nine deaths. Right, I'm going to guess is, like is part of the one. I'm going to say surprised. he's one of them. Stats Bender. Where are, where are the names? Move, Hillisang, and Freeze have all died nine times in a singular game. Betsy. The Weaver's Wall comes out. We're looking at Airwax. Will he join the illustrious crew? The answer is yes. Airwax goes down for the ninth time. Betsy is dead, so is oh, Ray. This oh, is the time. final team fight for G2. With Super Minions pushing into the base, they won't be able to break that record. But they will be able to break the Nexus. G2 onto the Nexus turrets. 26 kills in 32 minutes. There was never any doubt. The shoehorn maneuver. Perks will not connect to steal back. Not go down though. And G2 ace Rocket to take a 2-0 in three points. As we talked about, when you are the number one team, Trevor, and you play against number 10 in the league, these are the kind of games we want to see. Yeah, okay, this one got a little bit silly in the end, but G2 were so far ahead, they played a much better early game. I credit all of it to Sven's new hair. <laughs> <laughs> For the, you know, focus and mindset of the team. And good games, good games. A lot of kills. And Airworks, as you said, tied now? Tied.
with Hillisung, Freeze, and Move for the most Ooh. deaths. Yeah, I remember, I remember the Freeze game. That was the Ash game. Yes. Against G2. Yes. Funny enough. Well, he did cut. But that was also because the game fell apart around him, and then he yeah, got yeah. jumped on a whole lot. That's fair. That's fair. But he, he made some mistakes, too. Anyway, it's not about him. It's, it's, it's about G2. Yes. Uh, because this is where you just talk about the positives. Look, I think you look at G2 yesterday. They dropped that game to Giants. Um, Danish flag in the audience. Yes, well done. We all know that now. We love it. Uh, we saw that guy at All Star wearing that really weird suit. Um, yeah, I wonder who that guy that was. The world. I don't know. I feel like no one knew who he really was. It's like Superman. Maybe, no one knows his true identity. Maybe one day he will reveal himself, but for now, he won't. No, not for now. But yeah, I think you know you're gonna go back to what you said. For G2, clear three points. Uh, you expect G2 to be the clear favorites, and they showed that in both games. Yeah. Despite the case craziness. The craziness. But what's very important now is G2 are very clearly in control of first place. They're at the top of the table. They've got a, a points buffer between second and third. And they've got a few weeks to, you know, cement that top two. Yeah. And then start experimenting a little bit more. Again, this is where, as G2, you can take chances yeah. the next few weeks. You yeah. can try some different things. If you lose, then obviously switch back to something you know that works for the next game. Get the 1-1 at least. And then so, keep that top two. To Fisher, we've talked a whole lot about G2 uh, for obvious reasons. For Rocket, though, it's now starting to get further and further away from even making it into, you know, top seven. Yeah. So, you know, the team has just had struggles. Individual players as a team, like, now they've got to start setting their sights on challenger squads and promotion tournaments. Definitely. If you are a Rocket, I mean, keep in mind, they made these roster changes coming into it. They weren't yeah. forced to make any of them. They made them because they felt like this would be a much better lineup. Got Steelback as well. So, you know, we were like, Steelback and Betsy is going to be a great combo. Uh, obviously, Race and, and Prank have not been showing up, which has been a big issue for yes. Rocket, but it, it's a team issue. It is. Honestly. And just as a bump, next Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll have the Challenger semifinals. For now, though, we're going to head on to stage where Sven is standing by with Pyrotechnics. Thank you very much, Quickshot. Uh, Sven, a big 2-0 on the day. Uh, obviously, when you're facing first against 10th, that's got to be the clear favorites, but you guys pulled it off, and you looked a lot cleaner than you did yesterday. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, you know, how you guys have kind of got up and prepped for this on the short notice? Yeah, like last two weeks, I think all our practice goes into getting a lead. It's easy enough, and then... Playing the lead out without uh, dying randomly here and there and getting caught here and there. And like, that's what we practice all week, I think. Just snowballing cleanly without getting caught. So it didn't go so well against Giants in the first game. But uh, I think these three games uh, we played afterwards were pretty good. And today was good too. They made bad mistakes in lane swap and it was easy to execute after that. And you certainly were able to come on ahead. And you know, it, it's easy to forgive you some of the mistakes. You know, sometimes when people say snowball, you might think Nunu is going to be the correct answer. But uh, experimentation is always appreciated. You brought back the Lucian in the last couple of days. Obviously, it's been cycling around in the ULCS, but uh, we hadn't seen it from you as much. Why, why are you starting to go back towards that direction? Uh, at first, it was more like pick silver if it's open, and it's been banned <laughs> a lot. So sometimes you don't want to be immobile. So you don't want to pick Ash or Jin or these kind of champs that get caught easily. So I just go for the, the Lucian because I think Ezreal sucks. So I go for Lucian instead of Ezreal. And Ash and um, Jin are too immobile sometimes. So that's kind of where Lucian comes from. All right, Lucian and Ezreal sucks. Man, tell me how you really feel. All right. So it's good to, it's good to see the performance of so stepping up. You had a massive, massive game too, especially. Uh, last one I want to get, uh, get over to you. So looking ahead, you've got some, some tougher opponents on the horizon. You've got Splice, you've got H2K coming up in the following week. Uh, what are you doing to prepare for these specific opponents, or is it just kind of like a blanket strategy for everybody at this point? I mean, it's um, not really like everyone has their own niche champs, like uh, HK has the Draven, uh, Spice has the Talia, you know, so you have to look out for different things. But uh, in general, it's the same plan. You do your own drafts and you play the game the same way as you like, you play as the opponent is good, you know, you don't make plays based on, on their 10th place or their uh, third place, you know, so it's the same play and same drafts uh, most of the time. So we. Play with respect for opponents, always. Play with respect and don't fear anybody. Congratulations again on your win. Still in first place and looking forward to see how you guys develop going towards the end of the split. For now, though, we are going to go ahead and send it back to the cast just to break that one down again. Thank you very much, Pyra. Um, great interview, and, and I like hearing some honesty from Sven. Um, you know the way we measure like distance in, in measurements of Teemos? How many Teemos taller is Sven than Pyra? Yeah, that's a big question. It's kind of like... Like this when he's interviewing? Yeah, this is the opposite. Up there. Normally, I have to look up at him the whole time. Um, I'm going to say, so Timos is like what? In-game, he's like this big. Yeah. I'm going to give it like at least five. At least five Timos? Okay. Yeah. 
Four. I hope somebody, so make it four. I hope somebody who's got uh, some Photoshop expertise can jump on that one. Uh, we are at that point in the day where we have to talk about player of the game. C. Like when you're again in this like really heavy-handed, one-sided matchup, where do you go? I, uh, I voted for Methy. I thought I, I thought his too bard, voted. But we're not the only ones that vote. No. The real winner was Expect, actually. Um, showing up on that gangplank. I think he was set up to succeed. Yes. But and, he has and he carried it through. He has some great executions yeah. of barrel barrel mechanics. Yeah. Some good ulties as well. So uh, he definitely Perfect. took the advantage yeah. and he ran with it. You know, he had a great performance. He's definitely showing up against this competition. Yeah. Uh, and he's looking better and better every week. And this is one of those situations where democracy wins out. Shout right? out to Methido. Yeah. Uh, props to him. He did very well. Um, we've waffled about this game enough. Let's take a look at how things are going between H2K and Giants on EU LCS2. There's the ultimate in from Ryu chasing down Max Store. Second charge will land, but is now out of range. No one will fall. But this will result in a dragon for H2K. So this will be their first infernal of the game. And unfortunately for Giants, they just tried to force a play in the mid, which was again just a little bit too overzealous. The coordination wasn't exactly there. Knight wasn't in a position to provide the same sort of support, and he was forced to use his ultimate onto Max Law, who was fortunately for Giants able to get out of that sticky situation. So I think it's smart from Giants to concede this, but now the next Infernal Drake is going to be really important because there are two on the board. The third will give a big, big power spike to either team that's able to collect it. And so teams just need to ramp up. And looking at Sonstar, who's already stacking up that tier, as well as completed the Iceborne Gauntlet. That tier nearly completed. By the time the next Drake rolls around, he will be at a big two-item spike. Nidalee decided to go for the Rylai. It's also a big spike. Smitty J working towards his two item spike as well. So we're seeing a lot of spikes, a lot of sharp stuff happening all across the map right now. <laughs> and I think that that next Drake could really be the big deciding factor in who gains the momentum moving forward. Mm, for sure. We've had a lot of dragons so far, with the first one being picked up very early from these two teams. But, uh, I feel like we're in for a slightly longer game here. Last one was, I feel like, fairly fast just because it was a lot of kills happening. Uh, with Giants with just really good fights around those big objectives. Sumi J of course still has his uh, his buff and Maxwell may be called out. Good ultimate in front freeze means the rest of his team can capitalize and the CC chain will keep him in place. Maxwell goes down, just a great pick from H2K. Unfortunate for Maxwell, trying to get some vision down and ends up getting punished for it. Just caught completely unawares the the chain CC coming out from H2K was enough to get themselves the kill and now they're trying to put a bit of pressure down onto this tier one in the mid, but the poke coming out from Sunstar and Hustlin is actually enough to force Ryu back. And meanwhile, Smitty J was able to push that minion wave underneath the turret, and that's going to result in Odo Omni. So, a few quick things. Uh, that scoreboard tells me that Giants beat H2K. I've heard that there was uh, some barren shenanigans responsible for that. Giants are leading in game two against H2K. If they pick up three points now in 2-0, they are in the running for a top four position at yeah. the end of week six. Of course, we got that is mind boggling. We got a lot of teams now around the top six, even teams just outside, like Vitality and Unicorns of Love, who picked up quite some points. The Unicorns were three and one this week. Like all these teams, the music was about to play. Yeah, when I was like, so this happens. This happens in like uh, award shows where they play <laughs> you off. Uh, we will be taking a quick break when we come back. It's our final series of the day between Schalke, Null, Fear, and Splice. Let's hope it's a good one. Don't go anywhere. Ah, uh, today.